today, we're going to go over R for big data and integrating R with um, Teradata Aster. Today, we're going to go over running a simple R script in database, and our friend Roger Freed is back again. Roger, how are you doing? Doing very well this morning. Thank you, John. Hey, great. Glad to have you back. Thank you for continuing this series. We look forward to more from you. So why don't you take us away? What are you going to talk about today? Well, today I'm pretty excited to be able to show running a simple R script in database. And so in the last video we talked about why you would want to run it um, in database. And now we're going to uh, do a little review, uh, show the structure, and we're going to execute it in database. So we're actually going to go through some slides today, and then we're going to finish up with an actual bar demonstration, correct? Exactly. Awesome. Let's get going, buddy. Okay. Um, last time we talked, um, basically we discussed how R is great. Um, I mean, R is the Swiss Army knife of analytics. Lots of millions of users out there, all different types of users. Um, but it does have a few limitations. Um, in an age of big data and enterprise systems, it doesn't scale. It wasn't designed for that originally, and uh, so now that's a particular bottleneck. So one way to uh, use R but uh, to expand it is to integrate it with Teradata Aster which Teradata Aster is a discovery platform uh, with an architecture that uh, is designed to integrate other functionalities, other data systems, other data sources, um, an extensible architecture. And most importantly, Aster does scale. So you can take R and scale it through Aster. And uh, there's a lot of different ways that you can integrate R with Aster. And uh, this video is just focusing on one particular way, which is running our scripts in the Aster database via the Stream API. So if I can summarize here, basically you're able to, you know, take R and, and leverage it inside of Aster or with Aster, take advantage of all the goodness of the, the data functions and all the different types of SQL MR and SQL GR graph functions, as well as all the goodness of the R functionality and use it at data that's at terabytes or even petabytes in size and do it fast. Is that correct? That is correct. You take advantage of the best of both systems. Excellent. Okay, great. Keep, please continue. Okay. So I don't want to focus too much on Aster itself. I want to really focus on R because that's our interest. But let's just uh, visualize how this works in a larger scheme where Aster is designed from the ground up to be an extensible uh, system where we can integrate multiple different types of analytic functions, multiple different types of data storage, and we have a management process, a SNAP framework that handles all of the technical stuff under the scene, so we don't have to focus on that. So we just want to focus on the analytics and what we're doing. In particular, the next slide is going to dive into that plus in the upper right, that expansion. How do we expand the functionality of, of Aster and include R? Really so, defining a, a centralized analytic hub where you can do many different things from one place without having to jump around to different form factors or jumping around to different environments. So this is exciting stuff. And R is just one of those areas that you can plug in. Is that, is that where you're going here? Exactly. R is just one of the different ways. It's a, it's a special way because Aster has made investments in R integration, and so uh, we can use the, the stream API path that exists for basically any code that can be executed at the command line. Uh, so some examples would be Python, Perl, C, the C family. Um, so we can use the stream interface with R, but as I mentioned, there's other architectures that are being designed for integrating R with Aster, and we're just going to be focusing on the Stream API today. Fantastic. So using the Stream API, what we do is we take any, a script from any particular language, we wrap it in the Stream API structure, which manages the key management part is the management of the standard in and standard out. And then we push it into and execute it within the Aster database. So the focus here is 
that the Stream API manages all those languages that have the, the basic standard in, standard out paradigm. And it starts at its core with just a command line, a simple command line that invokes the R script and feeds the script any necessary parameters or options. The Stream API wraps this one command line in a SQL wrapper that controls how the R script executes within the overall process. So the, the wrapper controls the input data, the specific input data, it controls which aster table, or it could, we could feed it the result of a previous aster function, or we can bring it from Hadoop or Teradata, or any source that's GDBC or ODBC friendly. And we could also determine the output, which could be the screen, could be an aster table, could be the next step in an analytic process, et cetera. So here's the basic structure for the wrapper. Okay, this, the core here is the fourth line where it says script, and we're executing the R function, basically. And we have the word script. We have, after that, the call to the R application. And then we just give it, or feed it, the specific R script that we're going to be working with. And right now, we're going to be demoing something that I just called the simple echo script. Okay. So you're, you're, invoking, you're invoking the actual simple echo uh, script package via the stream operator, which looks very similar to the way our SQL and R functions work, which is the select star from stream. Um, is that is that exactly what you're doing here, uh, Roger? That's exactly what I'm doing. I'm using Aster's uh, SQL MR structure, and I am invoking stream as a function. I am feeding it or determining which table. It could be inputs one, inputs two, inputs three. We don't have to tell or write specific details into the R script for which table we can on the fly change the source. Could be we could one moment we could be running the R function or R script on after data and next minute we could be running it on Hadoop uh, information. And we determine the output structure of the data. In this case, uh, we're doing a simple echo function. So we're basically just echoing our inputs with a the splat symbol. Excellent. So if anyone's really familiar with the way Aster already works and they really want to get involved with R, and this is just a way to easily really take advantage of all that R capability, uh, as well as just, just taking what you already know with Aster and it makes it very applicable, very easy. Is that, is that pretty accurate? That's accurate. It's actually very easy um, conceptually and very easy to execute, as we'll demonstrate in a second. Awesome. I look forward to seeing it. So. Please continue, okay. sir. So here's the sort of the basic script. This is what you would take, and then you would transform this to execute whatever type of function that you want. And you can progressively get more complicated, more interesting with what you're doing, and take different analytic approaches to implement the full power of MapReduce on a massively parallel processing machine. But in the, at its core, all it is is establishing a standard N for your primary input, which could be hundreds of millions of rows. The size limitations disappear when you get into the aster paradigm. So this is boilerplate structure that you uh, paste into your, the beginning of your code. You execute a function, and in this case, we have a um, very, very simple function, just copying the information, but it could be hundreds of lines, it could be two lines, uh, whatever uh, functionality you're trying to include from the R framework and run it on Aster, uh, it would be executed here. And then you have the standard out structure, which you would again just paste in and then utilize. So most your effort is going to be on deciding what you want your R script to be and uh, designing this and prototyping it in whatever your favorite R application is. I tend to go for R Studio, but uh, it could be anything that you're comfortable with. 
Okay. Sounds great. Okay. Well, let's let's show how I would run this function from our studio, and uh, let's have fun with it. Okay. I'm switching to our studio. Okay, so now we're going through an actual live demo against an Astro platform, and you've got the R Studio package or application running, and you've got your script here. So is that fairly accurate? That's exactly it. Uh, okay. From R Studio, I connect to Astro with Astro acting as a database, and so it becomes an ODBC source. The standard way to connect to ODBC sources with an R is with the R ODBC library. You've already installed at this point the ODBC connector for Aster and set it up. I've given it the name, the DSN, the name Aster. So I'm giving it my user ID, my password, um, and just this boilerplate structure and establishing my connection. And once that connection is established, I can wrap Simple SQL uh, within the standard R structures and manage my Aster uh, processes from R Studio or anything that uh, um, is uh, ODBC friendly. So in this case, um, I've got my simple statement that we saw before. Um, I've added one additional option here, and this is a useful option that when you're running our scripts as opposed to our normally, um, our normally is very a very talkative process. It outputs a lot of information and lots of stuff comes to the screen. And we just want a simple function to execute. And the vanilla option sort of quiets down R to the you know to the basics. What is what are we really trying to do with the script? So mm -hmm. we're running we're calling R, we're telling it to be a little bit quieter than normal in terms of uh, text outputs. And we're giving it the script itself. And so let's go ahead and I mean, run it. Looks pretty, looks pretty straightforward from what you were doing, uh, what you showed earlier in the slides. Yeah, take, uh, yes. Take a look. Okay. So everyone who's uh, ever put their hands in R tends to recognize the IRIS uh, data set. And so here, all I'm doing is I am uh, echoing from one Aster table and pulling data from one Aster table, processing it through the um, stream interface and executing an R function, an R script in database. And then in this case, I've decided to bring the results to screen and because I want to see what I'm doing as I'm prototyping and testing. Um, okay. I could change this code and send it to an Astro table or some other direction, but in this case, I want to bring it to screen so I can test it out. So I'm going to run the script, and the script is going to bring back from my Astro table, in this case, the Iris data set. Fantastic. That's pretty pretty straightforward and pretty easy to do. and. I, I assume that I could just change that simple echo input function call into any of the R function calls that I I wished or that were were at my at my uh, you know at my uh, capabilities and be able to do those kinds of things as well. Is that correct? Exactly. So I would basically take this basic script, which has the, the standard in structure, standard out structure, and I would paste my code, whatever it may be here, and I would uh, tweak the code to pull in from input data, or whatever you want to rename this, and um, I would have it uh, output the data as results, and then I could execute the script. Now, now Roger, you used uh, R before you came to Teradata um, um, and joined our team. Um, how how much different is this from, say, your regular R experience, and how long did it take you to get up to speed with this uh, with this uh, this capability here? Well, I think the most interesting thing was the 
Um, the types of things that I tended to skip over in the R manuals, wherever it said input output, I tended to skip over that. And in the in the R classes, I tended to sort of zone out when people talked about input output. But it's it's exactly it's using the standard R structures for input output. And um, so once I picked up the R manual or recognized, okay, wait a second, I've I've learned all this before. This is standard R. There's nothing new or um, after about what I'm doing. This is a standard process for integrating with any database or executing um, R scripts at a command line. And so these skills are transferable. And easy and um, as uh, our community knows, uh, Google is one of the best sources, and there's plenty of information on, on how to execute uh, R in stream and how to execute R, R with input and output structures. So, in, in a nutshell, it was it was fairly simple for you to make the transition from standard R into after R. Is that is that a fair say, statement? Yes. In fact, I. Just uh, refreshed my basic R and figured out, okay, wait a second, this is very, very straightforward. Okay, excellent. Uh, anything else you have to show us today with the demo? Um, actually, what I'll just mention is that on the, the next video, I'll yeah, start with okay. the same. I'll start with the same basic script, and I'll start to add functionality to it as it is right now. Um, it does a very, very simple thing, but it's a, it's a trivial thing. Um, we're going to start to add uh, value to it, and we're going to start to manage the different input and output structures to, for example, output to a table, because obviously we wouldn't want to output millions of rows to screen, but we'll start to show how you can push all of the processing in the aster so that R doesn't have any or the process that you're trying to run doesn't have the size limitations that R typically has. Well, I'm looking forward to that. And uh, this has been an excellent uh, video. And I, again, Roger, thank you very much for your time. I know you're very busy. Um, we look forward to uh, having you out again. And uh, thank you very much. Well, thank you, John. I'm really excited to be here and uh, looking forward to the next video. Okay. Take care, Roger.